Right, everybody. I'm trying a new uh, camera system here, so I'm hoping that this is going to work out the way that I expect it to. Um, but for now, I want to go ahead and go over that quiz because that's a difficult quiz. Those questions are hard on purpose. And I just wanted to be able to show you what that uh, what the right answers there should have looked like. So let me go ahead and pull up the screen here and see what this looks like. Like I said, it's a new uh, recording procedure for me here. So, oh, look at that. I've got my <laughs> I've got my toolbar hiding what that screen is supposed to look like. Let's try that again. There. Okay, so I just wanted to go over the quiz real quick. Um, and again, yeah, it's difficult. Okay, so question one. A wild bear invades your professor's home, damaging his dwelling in the amount of $5,000 replacement cost, 3000 actual cash value, personal property in the amount of 2500 replacement cost. 1500 actual cash value. How much of this loss will be paid by the HO3? All right, well, you got two losses, part to the dwelling, part to the property. Let's take them one at a time. Damage to the dwelling. Uh, what coverage? Yeah, it's coverage A, open perils or name perils? Open perils. Everything's covered unless it's excluded. Do you think damage by a bear is excluded? Yeah, it's it's not. It's, it's, this is one of those weird loss questions, and this is going to lead us to a pattern that we would always see. So uh, the loss here is going to be covered. And the only thing you have to answer is, is replacement cost or actual cash value. Coverage A we know is replacement costs, right? So 5,000 is going to be paid for the dwelling. What about the personal property? Coverage C, open perils or named perils? Named perils, right? So it's only covered if it's on the list. Do you think a wild bear damaging the property is going to be on the list? No, it won't. Property is not going to be covered because it's not a named peril. Uh, so the right answer here is going to be $5,000. Question number two, a hailstorm damages your professor's roof and also his Steinway concert grand piano. Uh, if your professor has HO3 policy with coverage A limit of 100000 how much of this loss will it pay? Well, uh, the roof uh, is what coverage? It's coverage A, right? Dwelling. So open perils or name perils, it's open perils, everything's covered unless it's excluded, settled at replacement cost or actual cash value? Replacement cost. So we got 25,000 here. Here's the tricky part, the concert grand piano. Uh, that's personal property, open perils or name perils? Right, named perils. Uh, hailstorm, is that a named peril? If you look at your list, you'll see, you'll see it is. Um, so then the last thing is, is covered at replacement cost or actual cash value? It's covered at actual cash value, but the limit is 50% of coverage A right? So you're only going to get 50000 for the loss to the piano. That's the most you can get for property. So you get 50000 for the piano, you get 25000 for the roof, uh, you get 75000 in total. An earthquake causes damage to Bob's dwelling and causes also damage to a, a piece of property here. How much is his policy going to pay? Well, um, you can go through all the list if you want, but I'm hoping that you jumped right away to this idea that earth movement is excluded. So this loss isn't going to be covered at all. Um, no no luck there. Number four, Jim has an HO3 policy with a $100,000 limit. Fire burns down his detached garage. We have damage to the garage. We got damage to the property in the garage. Uh, well, the property in the garage, start with that. Open perils or name perils. It's named perils because this is coverage C, right? So replacement cost or actual cash value. Actual cash value for coverage C, you're going to get $2,500 for the property. The damage to the garage. This is a little bit like the other question that we did here with question two, right? Question two is limited because the max in coverage C is 50% of A. Well, detached garage, what coverage is that? Yeah, that's coverage B. The max you can get for coverage B is 10% of coverage A. Right, so if his limit is hundred thousand, the most you can get is ten thousand for the garage. So you get ten thousand for the garage. You're limited by the max for coverage B, and you get twenty five hundred for the property. You get twelve thousand five hundred. Sorry that that thirty thousand was checked. That's not right. Twelve thousand five hundred is right. So here's a question about special limits of liability. Gavin's house is broken into. The following items are stolen: uh, his bicycle, his computer, some cash, firearms and a rare parrot. So all of this is coverage C, so you know it's all named perils. Is theft a named peril? Yeah, it is, that's not a problem. Uh, all losses are gonna be settled at actual cash value, but the issue here is a couple of these things have special limits of liability. 
Bicycles, no problem. Computers, no problem. So we're up to 2,500. Cash, what's the special limit of liability on cash? Yeah, 200 max, right? So we're up to 2,700. Firearms, whoops, we have a special limit of liability that applies only in the case of theft. That's what this is. 2,500 is the most he can get for that. So we got uh, 2,000. 500, we got 2,500, another 2,500 from the firearms, 200 from the cash, that's another 200. And then his parrot was stolen. Well, that's a pet. Uh, animals, birds, and fish are not covered here. So 5,200 um, is the most that he can expect there. Question number six, the Arneson family has an HO3 policy with a coverage A limit of 200,000. What's the most that could be paid out under section one for a single loss? Well, the, trick, the key to this question is understanding that all of those losses do stack on top of each other. It is possible that you could get the max of coverage A plus the max of coverage B plus the max of coverage C plus the max of coverage D. That's section one, right? So we tell you coverage A is 200,000. Okay, well, you could also get another 20 for coverage B. So you're up to 220. You could also get 50% for coverage C. That's another 100. So you're up to 320. And then you could get 30% of 200 for coverage D. Um, and that's another 60,000 and you're up to 380. So yeah, all those do, st it is possible, it's not likely, but it is possible that would be the most that could be paid out for a single loss because all of those sublimits do stack on top of, top of each other. Number seven, which of the following perils is covered? Um, so really we need to know the exclusions. Earth movement, that's an exclusion. Neglect is an exclusion. Flood is an exclusion. What about aircraft? Aircraft, this is tricky, aircraft as property is excluded. If something damages my airplane, my homeowner's policy isn't going to pay for it. But the question asks about perils. Which of the perils is covered? If you look at your named perils list, aircraft is on there. So if a plane crashes into my house, that is covered. Uh, that's the only one here uh, that's actually covered. The rest are excluded. All right, question eight. The home of Tony Soprano is damaged by an unexpected fire. He's worried about his aquarium and the valuable fish inside. Aquarium has a replacement cost of 1,500, ACV of 1,200. The rare fish have a value. How much is the insurer going to pay under his unendorsed HO3 policy? We're going to use this language a lot on the exam. Um, it's an HO3 policy. It's unendorsed. The limits are unlikely to come into play here because the limit on the personal property is 50% of A. So if we're only talking about a loss that's in the neighborhood of four or $5,000, it's not like he has a coverage A limit of $10,000 where the limit is going to come into play. So we don't worry about it here. If it does come into play, um, I'll probably tell you, hey, coverage A limit is this much. And then you have to figure out what the limits are for B, C, and D. Anyway, back to this problem. So uh, what about the fish? Yeah, fish aren't covered. That's a type of excluded property. So it doesn't matter on their values. Aquarium, what is that? Personal property, what coverage? Coverage C, open perils or named perils? Named perils, it's fire a named peril. Yeah, it's the first one. Are losses settled at replacement costs or actual cash value? Losses in coverage C are settled at actual cash value. Boom, 1,200, we're done. Question nine, Alicia has an unendorsed HO3 policy. She's painting her kitchen and she spills paint on her diamond ring. A replacement cost is 5,000, actual cash value is 3,000. How much is gonna be paid if we're not worried about a deductible? Well, uh, what is this? What is a ring? What coverage are we looking at here? Well, it's property. So this is coverage C, personal property. Uh, what do we know about jewelry? Jewelry has a special limit of liability of 1,500 but only for the peril of theft. This isn't theft. That's not what we're dealing with. Uh, open perils are named perils for coverage C. It's named perils. Spilling paint on a diamond ring. Does that sound like a named peril? Yeah, it's not. This loss isn't going to be covered. Now, if it was a fire that burned her diamond ring, she'd get actual cash value. It was If it was theft of the diamond ring, she'd only get 1500 because of that special limit of liability that applies uh, to jewelry. Uh, but because this is not a named peril, they don't. she doesn't get anything at all. Um, yeah, it gets a little tricky. These are hard questions, okay? I just don't think it does a whole lot of good to, you know, test you on super simple questions. Um, the value of the, the quiz is relatively low stakes, um, and we'll see when we get to the exam that partial credit is possible. 
Um, so don't stress too much about this. Even if you're missing a lot of these questions, it's not worth a whole lot in terms of points. Um, last question. This is the hardest one. Okay, so when you see a question that says you have an 80% coinsurance requirement, that means you have to pay attention. Is this person carrying 80% of replacement cost? His coverage A limit is 150000 and replacement cost is 200000 Uh-oh, looks like he's only carrying 75%. So that means if he gets a partial loss, he's not going to fully recover. We have to reduce that by the coinsurance formula that we talked about. Okay, so we've got replacement cost of the loss, actual cash value of the loss. We're talking about damage to the house. That's, uh, that's dwelling. So that's replacement cost, and we're talking about fire. Um, so this is apparel that's covered. We're going to be using replacement cost. 32000 is the number, except that he's not carrying 80% of the value. Now, if we didn't have that information, we'd be done. It'd be replacement cost and, and you're done. But because we see he's not carrying the full replacement cost, we have to do a little math. Um, and I cheated on this one. I made it a little bit easier. Let me go ahead and uh, open up a, a problem here that we can look at. Let me, okay, good, my font is big. So remember what that formula looks looks like. Got a little bit bigger so everybody can see it. Coinsurance formula, what does that look like? Well, we take the amount carried and we divide it by the amount required. And then we take that fraction times the loss and that's how much he'll recover. So how much was he carrying? Go back to the problem. He's carrying 150,000. Um, how much is he supposed to carry? 80% of 200,000, that's 160, right? So I'm skipping steps here. I'm trying to make it clear to what we're doing. So uh, the amount carried, I'll, I'll go ahead and spell it out. 150,000. How much is he required to carry? Well, it's not 200,000, it's 80% of 200,000, right? So that's 160,000. So now we've got this amount carried over amount required. So if we've got the amount carried over the amount required, Well, that's going to reduce down to 15, it's going to be 150,000 over 160,000, and that'll reduce down to 15 sixteenths, right? And that's the part where I cheated because I said we're going to take 15 sixteenths times the loss. That's what he's going to recovery. That's what he's going to recover, excuse me. Uh, so 15 sixteenths times the loss. Well, here's where I cheated. How much is the loss? Let's go back. The loss here is 32,000, right? And that actually makes it kind of easy. Because I can do this one in my head, right? It's 30,000. And there you go. That's the problem. So go back to the quiz. 30,000 is the answer. I'm going to go ahead and submit um, just to prove to you that the answers that we just talked about that I filled out are going to uh, yield the score that we we're talking about the score for this quiz hey look at that five out of five i got everything right which is what you would expect from the guy who designed the quiz right okay hopefully that's helpful i mean this is explaining to you what the right answers are supposed to be it is hard if you got two and a half or better i know that you're doing pretty well all right there's not going to be too many people that are getting five out of five on this quiz um, but that's why I put it up here so you can learn and you can see the neat thing about this when I'm asking you to do problems, there are only so many things I can pick from. I can see if you know the named perils list. I can see if you know those special limits of liability. I can, um, you know, I can see if you know the limits of the different coverages, A, B, C, and D. I can see if you know exclusions, but outside of that, there's not a whole lot I can do. So if you know the coverages, you know that outline that we've been putting together, and you know the special limits of liability, and you know the exclusions, there's really nothing from section one I can ask you that you can't answer. So you can do this, okay? I hope this helped. Um, send out a message if, uh, if you need more help, and I'm happy to try to do what I can. Thanks, guys.